Since the 1980s, PC flight simulation has seen continuous technological advances. Most recently, virtual reality has made its way into the hobby with X-Plane, FSX, P3D, Aerofly FS2, and DCS all having ways and methods to experience them in VR. In this video, I'm going to break down the who, what, how, and why of virtual reality flight simming. Virtual reality has recently had a resurgence with Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, both releasing platforms designed and priced for consumers. I personally have been using VR since June of 2016 and have found VR gaming and apps to be amazing. Those familiar with my YouTube channel know that my preference for flight sim is to fly in VR. One question I receive from subscribers most often is, what is it like to fly in VR? While this is a challenging question to answer, the goal of this video is to provide you with some insight based on my experience using X-Plane, FSX, and Aerofly FS2 with Oculus Rift. I'll be focusing on Oculus Rift and HTC Vive since these two PC-based VR platforms are comparable and offer the most overall functionality. In this video, we'll cover today's VR flight sim solutions, VR and flight sim PC requirements, VR headsets, the pros and cons of VR flight sims, frequently asked questions about VR flight sims, and VR flight sims beyond 2017. Let's take a look at the VR flight sim choices that are available as of July 2017. If you're looking for native VR flight simulation, you have two choices, Aerofly FS2 and DCS. Both of these sims offer very good VR experiences. Currently for X-Plane, FSX, and P3D, you'll need Fly Inside for VR support, a third-party app that reprojects these sims into Oculus Rift or HTC Vive. Your PC will dictate performance, but we'll cover that in the next section. Dovetail Games currently has no announced plans for Flight Sim World VR support. Fly Inside recently announced a flight sim that is planned for late 2017 and has VR support out of the gate. Laminar Research recently announced plans to provide native VR support in X-Plane by fall of 2017, with improvements to frame rate optimization being released over the next few months. In my view, Laminar's commitment to native VR support signals the importance of virtual reality to the PC flight sim market. Let's take a look at VR and flight sim PC requirements. But first, a disclaimer. The subject of PC requirements is filled with opinions and by no means can I define in this video the right PC system to meet your wants and needs. Please consider this as general guidance and do your research when it comes to configuring your PC for your application. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, I highly recommend being cautious of Oculus and HTC's PC recommendations, especially their min specs. Both companies have a vested interest in promoting the use of their headset with a wide variety of PC configurations. The game or application you're viewing in VR has everything to do with the power you'll need to have a pleasant VR experience. So while it may be technically true you can use VR with manufacturer's minimal specs for PCs, it's likely it will be limiting in terms of VR performance. The bottom line, when it comes to VR flight simming, you're going to need a fairly robust PC. Your PC has to run both your flight sim and VR at the same time. Your CPU and GPU decisions should be based on this. Today's flight sims tend to be CPU intensive, though this is changing as developers embrace newer graphics engines that squeeze the most out of GPUs. Considering today's VR and flight sim requirements, you're probably going to want to go with an i7 quad-core class CPU in the 4 GHz range or greater. For GPU power, I recommend a GTX 1070 class graphics card or greater. This is the sweet spot for most flight sims and has plenty of power for today's VR apps. For memory, I recommend a 16 GB configuration at minimum. This should cover you for most application and flight sim requirements. For disk space, I prefer an SSD for the boot drive and either SSD or HDD for your storage drive. If you go HDD, you'll want to go 7200 RPM because the faster your sim loads, the sooner you'll fly. Here's a look at the configuration that I'm using for my VR flight sim setup. If you're building or buying a PC, it's a good idea to consider an upgrade path. As flight sim and VR tech advances, they will require more advanced PC resources. To keep pace, you'll want to have options to upgrade your CPU, memory, disk space, and GPU power. There's what you'll want to do today in VR and what you'll want to do in the future, and I recommend a PC configuration that will set you up for both. Next, let's discuss VR headsets. Both Oculus Rift and HTC Vive will work for VR flight sims, but just be sure to check which headset will support the flight sim of your choice. Both of these platforms have pros and cons, and there are dozens of YouTube videos comparing them, so I recommend checking that out. Both have growing libraries of titles and plenty of R&D dollars behind them enhancing their products. I looked at both options and chose Oculus Rift for comfort, touch control, simplification of cables, and Oculus support and the built-in headset and microphone come in handy when talking to ATC on Pilot Edge. But I highly recommend test driving both headsets to see which one is the best fit for you. 
Let's take a look at the pros and cons of VR flight sims. First, the pros. Amazing realism through 3D immersion with a vivid sense of height and distance. Virtual cockpit provides amazing sense of actually being in the aircraft. 3D view of landscape makes flight maneuvers easier with a lifelike feel. More compact and less expensive than the 3 monitor configuration. More immersive than Track IR because of 3D view. And finally, you can experience other VR games and apps with your VR headset. And now the cons. With the current VR headset technology, objects in the distance tend to be hazy or blurry due to headset pixel density limitations and screen door effect. You can use a zoom function as virtual binoculars to mitigate this. Flipping up the headset to view maps, charts, or write ATC instructions, which does break the immersion a bit. Fly Inside does offer a virtual window option that allows you to bring external windows into the VR cockpit. You need to be positionally aware of external yokes, joysticks, throttles, etc. This becomes easy after a few hours of flying. And last, the cost of buying your VR headset and the required PC hardware. But personally, I feel the 3D vision and immersive flying experience you gain with VR far outweighs the drawbacks. Here are the frequently asked questions I get most often about flying in VR. What is it like to fly X-Plane 11 in VR? The simplest answer is, in my opinion, it's as close to flying a real aircraft as you can get outside of a commercial simulator. The three-dimensional immersion pulls you into the virtual world you're flying in, and flight maneuvers like landing and coordinated turns are much easier in VR because you actually experience a sense of height and peripheral vision, giving you an accurate sense of where your aircraft is in space. Most people will tell you that after flying in VR, it's very hard to go backwards to 2D flying. Which is the best flight sim for virtual reality? Now this is a highly flammable question, but I'll try to answer it as best I can. My personal flight sim choice is X-Plane 11 using Fly Inside because of its realism, platform openness, aviation physics, and navigation features. It's also a plus that X-Plane's native VR is in development and planned for fall of 2017. Aerofly FS2 with native VR looks amazing but has limited map size and limited navigation functions. While FSX can be used in VR using Fly Inside, you're getting the look and flight physics expected on this platform. DCS has a very good native VR implementation. As I mentioned previously, Flight Sim World currently has no native or third-party VR support. So if asked to rank them in order, mine would be X-Plane 11, Aerofly FS2, DCS, and then FSX. It's not fair for me to rank P through D since I haven't tried it in VR. My guess would put it between X-Plane and Aerofly. Are gauges and instruments readable in the virtual cockpit? Using X-Plane 11 stock 172, the answer is yes, when graphic settings are properly configured. For example, I use 200% pixel density on the Rift, max setting in X-Plane, and 2880 by 1620 settings on Fly Inside. While sitting at a normal distance from the panel, I can easily read medium to large size text on the instruments. I have to lean in a bit to read smaller text, probably as it would be in real life. That said, a person's eyesight also has to be taken into consideration. Is it difficult to set up a VR flight sim? It was actually pretty easy. Both Rift and Vive have plug-and-play installation processes, and Fly Inside was fairly simple to set up. There's plenty of help on forums, YouTube, and Google. Do you experience eye strain or headaches from using VR? I personally have not had eye strain problems or headaches from VR use, but I have read where some have experienced these issues. Your eyes are close to the headset display, so if you're prone to eye strain, you may want to read up on this. I usually give my eyes a break after about two hours of flying. Have you experienced sim sickness? I personally do not get sim sickness in VR as long as the frame rate in the headset is above 80 frames per second. 90 plus is optimal. Less than 80 frames per second in the headset or fast jerky movements can cause sim sickness. Some say they've built up a tolerance after using VR for a while, but for me, I've had no issues flying X-Plane 11 with Fly Inside, provided Fly Inside was generating 90 frames per second or greater. And now let's speculate on the future of VR flight sims. Most will agree that the holy grail for VR headsets is the visual experience comparable to human eyesight. And this will take considerable advancements in computing and VR technology. In their current form, Rift and Vive provide a 1080 by 1200 resolution per eye, a 90 hertz refresh rate, and a 110 degree field of view. This limits the combined resolution to just above 1080p. As technology advances, we will see improvements in pixel density, field of view, frame rate, and how we interact in the virtual environment. For VR flight sims, this will translate into a clearer visibility, increased field of view, improved immersion, and a more natural interaction. It goes without saying that these advances will require more powerful computer components. But don't expect these next generation improvements anytime soon. 
Speculation is that the Oculus and Vive next generation VR headsets will start to appear sometime around 2019. And by that time, there are likely to be other choices in VR headsets as well. In summary, while I'm a supporter of VR flight sims, my goal here was to present a balanced overview. There is a financial commitment associated with getting into virtual reality flight sims, and I highly recommend experiencing it first before making the investment. While there are areas that can be improved, it's been my experience that VR is the best way to enjoy flight sim flying for a number of reasons. First, the sense of 3D depth and height gives you a truly immersive flight experience. Second, flight maneuvers are easier to coordinate in 3D. Third, you feel like you're actually in the cockpit of the aircraft you're flying, increasing the immersion substantially. I've been flying flight sims since the 1980s, and if I had to choose between 2D desktop and VR flight sim flying, I would choose VR in the blink of an eye. Thanks for watching this guide to virtual reality flight simulation. If you found this information helpful, please hit the like button and please share this video with your friends or on Reddit or any other flight sim related forum. And don't forget to subscribe to Bambino Games for more virtual reality flight simulation. Have a great day and fly safe.